Hey everybody, welcome back. As always, I am Skullman012291, and you're watching another episode of The Curse of Monkey Island. So, in the last episode, um, well, what, what did we do over in the town of Puerto Pollo, of the Chicken Port? Um, well, we were able to get ourselves the map. And you're wondering, where the hell did we get a map from, and how did we get it? Well, the map was tattooed on the back of uh, Palado, Mr. Sandwedge, over at the, uh, the beach area. And we had to play some pretty nasty tree uh, uh, tricks on him, not treats. It's not, it's not Halloween, it's only, it's almost, it's just the end of March. It's March 29th as I'm recording this. Wow. Uh, but no, either way, um... We had to play some pretty nasty tricks on him so that we could actually get the map. If you don't know how we got the map, I'm not gonna tell you guys. You have to, you just have to go and watch the previous episode for that. Seriously, you're gonna have to watch it. So we did that, and we also finally got all three members for our pirate crew: Eddie Van Helgen, Cutthroat Bill, and Haggis McMutton. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're actually almost done with Puerto Pollo, or with Plunder Island itself. Uh, so I figure what I'll do now is, you know, maybe I'll talk to each of these guys and find out a little bit about, of their, like, past. You know, see how, see how they were pirates before. Um, yeah, there we go. I knew it. so like everyone so each person has their own different pirate story and they're pretty enjoyable so let's just go and listen to each person's tale well we have to talk to each person of course individually they don't just start talking at the same time which I wish would happen because that would be really cool but oh well I'm talking too much I bet you have a ton of cool pirate stories oh yeah no I couldn't oh come on I'd really like to hear some of the year was 1675. We were on a course towards the wreck of the rattling phlegm. Our days were filled with songs of the voyage and the untold riches we'd find at our destination. Two months into our journey, we realized something was horribly wrong. Uh-oh. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> um, some kind of seasickness. Shipping placed under some kind of pirate curse haunted by the spiteful ghost of a former captain is this gonna be scary or uh, this is really freaking me out stop it please uh. yeah if you choose this one then he just automatically stops telling a story and then I don't think you can go back and and listen to it again I'm pretty sure you can't so let's not go for that one but uh, let's go with this one, why not? Is this gonna be scary? Yes. Because I warn you, I'm easily startled and will scream like a baby. <laughs> Steal yourself, young pirate. We were all stricken with a melody. A diabolical song that I shall never forget. What was it? Hey, that's kinda catchy. Aye. All too catchy for a crew of 50 men confined to a ship hundreds of miles from port. No one could think of anything else, and many threw themselves into the sea rather than hear any more of the incessant humming. We returned with but eight of our crew left. The doomed voyage of the Obsessivo Compulsivo will haunt me forever. Wow. And to think, that tune, that tune sounds almost familiar. As if... As if we heard it in a episode zero of sorts. I don't know. I mean, it's it's something. It's just wow. You no, know, just wow. I do agree with Guybrush though. That tune is really catchy. I do. I really do like it a lot. I like it. I like that tune. It's a good tune. So, well, I guess Eddie Eddie had a pretty good story. I mean. If you're into guys thro throwing themselves off boats for hearing a specific tune that drove them crazy. So, yeah. 
if you ask him that, then he's just gonna say, "Yeah, yeah, we're all, yeah, we're I'm ready as long as everyone else is ready, which they are, but we don't have a boat, so there's no point asking that." Whoa! Look at the time. Got a scoop. Yep. So now the next person we'll talk to is good old Cutthroat Bill. Um, we asked this one before, I believe. You really enjoy being a barber? It's a steady income. That's what I thought. Yeah, we did. Uh, again, same uh, same option for all. They all say the same thing now. Um, uh, pirate stories. Pirate stories. Got any? Okay, here's a story. I started out as a crewman on the raging tightwad, sailing out of Puerto Pollo. Mm -hmm. The captain was a master treasure hunter, a diviner from some ancient secret society. All he right. Had some weird fifth sense when it came to finding objects of value. Wait, a, a fifth sense? Um... Yeah, don't you really mean a sixth sense? I, I'm sorry, I have to go with this one. I mean, these two, I mean, we already heard is this going to be scary practically says the same thing, I guess, throughout every, for everyone. So I'm going to actually just kind of go for this one. I mean... How could I mean everyone has five senses? I mean, you know, the sense of sight, smell, taste, touch, and hear. Everyone's got those five. So something is got something's got to be mm, something's up with this. Don't you mean sixth sense? No. By some cruel trick of nature, he was born without taste bud. Ah. But his other senses took over. Okay. Gave him an uncanny ability to find treasure. We left port without a map, guided only by the captain's keen senses. We spent the first week going around in circles, until we realized the crew's gold earrings were throwing the captain off. Uh -huh. After we tossed all our jewelry, gold coins, and belt buckles overboard, we got back on course. Hmm. Uh, how long is the story anyway? No. Um. Yeah, I don't want to piss off Bill, so I'm not gonna go with that one. I'm just gonna, yeah, go for the first one. Doesn't seem so bad. Did you ever find any treasure? We sailed for two years, and had finally started back to Plunder Island. But just as we started to doubt him, he paid off. We found sunken treasure right off the coast. Whoa, really? Was it an enormous pile of jewelry and gold coins and belt buckles at the bottom of the bay? Exactly. How did you know that? I just had a feeling. Ha <laughs> uh, So in case you couldn't figure, in case you didn't quite get it, the treasure that they found was all the stuff that they already that that Bill's crew originally had. It was the gold, it was the earrings, the belt buckles, the, all the other jewelry they had. They threw it off the boat, into the water, and then they just went and when the captain said, Ah, I found gold, we found treasure, lads. It was just all the same stuff that they had originally. So they never gained any treasure. Essentially, they never gained any treasure. Um, uh, yeah, do they, you know any more pirate stories? Do you know any more pirate stories? Want the story about how I slit the throat of the annoying little pirate who kept asking me questions? Ooh. Is something troubling you? Ugh, that, um, that sounds kind of evil. So, I guess we're done with Bill here. It's been a pleasure. Bye. And now to move on to Haggis, who I think has possibly the best story, I think, personally. I mean, Bill's was pretty good. Bill's was good. Uh, Haggis' is, is... Oh, that's pretty good, too. Um, okay, yeah, there we go. How'd you become a barber pirate? There we go. How did you become a barber pirate? I spent ten years at sea on board the HMS Anathema. The fastest ship in the Scottish Navy. Ah, the so Scots. How did that help you become a barber pirate? That was a clip of ship. Ah. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get the joke. I'm sorry. A clipper ship. Uh. 
oh wait, maybe because it's called a clipper ship, clippers, you know, to cut the hair. Oh, I think I get it now. I think I get it. Hmm. All right, so huh. actually, uh, let's go. Yeah, want to know more about safe hair? Rep I want to know more about safe hair replacement systems. Yeah, you that could. That is no such thing. Really? It's no proper to fool with the course of nature. Is that right? Um. So you started this salon. Aye, but not on the own. I grew to love hair styling so much that I told two of my best friends about it. And then they told two friends. Aye, and they told two friends, and so on and so on. Uh-huh. And yet, it's only you and your two best friends. And not you and your two best friends and their own two best friends and so on and so forth. It's just the three of you guys. Awesome. But we're here for your main pirate story. Do you know any rousing pirate stories? Well, there is the story of the secret of Bulky Island. We were a crew of two score men under the command of Big Jake McJuggernaut, the most powerful captain on the seas. One night in port, Captain Jake heard a tale of an enormous treasure buried somewhere on Bulky Island. We set hmm. sail and landed on the island within a fortnight and found the treasure the next morning. Awesome. Uh, huh. Where, yeah, actually, where is Bulky Island? But then again, I do want to know how big the treasure is, but then again, I don't really see a point in asking this since, you know, I mean, I mean, you should take his word for it. I mean, if it was, if he's, if he says, if he says it's a big treasure, then I don't have any reason to doubt him. Honestly, I don't. Bulky Island, where's that? You won't find it on any map. Captain Jake took the location of the treasure to his grave. Oh, it was a beautiful Oh, so he's place. dead. A tremendous chest nice. made of solid gold. Big Jake leapt into the hole and wrapped his sinewy arms around the chest. He gathered his resolve, counted to three, filled his lungs and lifted with all his might. The sound of his back cracking brought <sighs> him to even the most steel-hearted crewman. By night, <sighs> a lot of us that hurts. on the beach writhing in pain. Wow, that 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 really hurts. Uh, like just cracking your back, trying to lift up a solid gold treasure chest. I mean, that's just that's just ow, that's painful. Um, hmm. These are all pretty good options, except this one. This isn't a real option. Um. Okay, well, I think let me think about it. Flooding the hole and letting the chest float out. Uh, if it's made out of gold, chances are it would still sink. Personally, that's what I think. A uh, system of ropes and pulleys could work. I think that could work. Um, work in pairs or groups of three or four. Yeah, I guess that could work. Or just the classic lifting with your knees as opposed to lifting with your back. Hmm. Quite a number of good options, but you know, let's just let's go with lifting with your knees. Why didn't you lift with your knees? That would have been the weak man's way out. Oh, excuse me. Pirate Angus McFolker had followed us to Bulky Island, wanting the treasure for himself. The weakling used a lever and took the chest, laughing at us as he carried it to his ship. Now he's and a smart friend, guy. Captain McJuggernaut died in traction, cursing himself for not being strong enough. No, oh, I feel bad for I feel bad for him now. But you know, then again, it is his fault. I mean, I mean, you can blame him, and you should blame him for you know not being smarter than that. I mean, he just tried he tried to go and lift it by using his back as opposed to his knees which everyone knows gives you the best leverage 
when you're lifting things. Never use your back, kids. Never use your back. That's all I'm saying. End of discussion. I'm officially ending this conversation. By going and pressing never mind. Never mind. Alright, so we've talked to everyone here. Uh, now, on to the main point of business. We still need to try to find a pirate ship. And since this pirate ship here is sunk, practically down to the bottom, this one here is stuck in a swamp. The only other pirate ship that I see here is the one resting at Danger Cove. So we just gotta go all the way back here and make our long and boring and arduous journey back to the little rowboat right over here. And just go and get on the boat. There you go. And quick tap over to the pirate ship. Now remember that if you try to make your way back up on here as I'm tr as I'm showing you right now, and if you try to do anything here, if you for instance, if you try to okay, well you can do stuff that are like really close to you like examine the hold. That's strange. The hold is full of broken luggage. Huh, you don't say. If you go and try to pick it up, mm, no. it doesn't work. If you try to go over to the door here, it won't work. Because... Hmm. Okay, you can look at the door, fine, but can you talk to it? Nah. No. You can look at the bucket of tar. It's a big old sloppy bucket of tar. Yeah. Big old sloppy one. But, you know, if you go and if you try to pick it up or something Who's there? the monkeys are back and so is Mr. Fossey you again, you again? Uh, Mr. Fossey All right. in you go. and so then you're practically stuck in this perpetual loop of doom of monkeys wielding swords and knives and daggers in their mouths and you're always going to be jumping off the plank whenever you try to get up back up on the boat as I'm showing you right now once again and I'm going to skip that by pressing a skip so it gets up faster but I'm actually now going to go all the way back down cuz you know I'm not going to show you again if you try it so there has to be a way to kind of go and remove the plank somehow huh if only we had some way to go and, I don't know, remove it. Whether it be, I don't know, setting it on fire or cutting it or something, I don't know. Actually, you know, let's try the scissors. If the scissors can cut through anything, surely they can cut through a plank. The plank is too thick to cut through with scissors. Ah, oh, so they can't cut through anything is what you're trying to tell me. Can they cut through the window? I don't want to cut that. You don't want to cut that. Let's cut the robot. I don't want to cut that. I don't want to cut that. Okay, fine. Don't cut it. Uh, so then I guess what we could do, or what we should do, is try the bread knife. I mean, hell, if it worked with cutting the sawhorse in the uh, in the last episode, then it should very well work cutting up wooden plank. I think it'd work. And look at that. There goes the plank. Look at that. Floating plank. It's the remnants of the ship's plank. The remnants of the ship's plank. Couldn't have said it better myself. I don't need the plank. You don't need a plank. Okay, fine. Then don't take the plank. Although you don't know if he'll ever come in handy. You'll never know. But now that the plank has been taken care of, we'll just make our way back up here. And... Now we'll just, I don't know, try either to pick up the bucket of tar, or... Better yet, try to open the door. Whatever. We haven't tried that. Who's there? But the same thing always happens. Monkeys, the monkey alarm, 
And Mr. Fossey. Again with the sneaking on board the ship. Yeah. I don't know how or why you came back on board. Neither do I. Next time you walk the plank, we'll be your last. Oh, is that, that captain? Is that right? Oh, it's Captain Lecha. Whatever Lecha means. Darn feathers. But it's the only torture we have left. How about a stern warning? Has declared that you shall be tarred and feathered. Tarred and feathered. Nah. Oh wow. Ugh. It's kind of gross looking. I mean, just look at Guybrush's eye. What the hell? That's just creepy looking. So what do I do now? Hmm. I don't know. We've never done this before. <laughs> Aren't you humiliated? I guess so, but no more than usual. Well, and just get lost then. <laughs> just get lost. <laughs> wow. All right, so here's Guybrush. Tarred and feathered. Scary. Looks watertight to me. Yeah, all right, can't we just get back on the boat and kind of say hi to them again? I'd better not now. I think I'm starting to make those guys angry. Oh, all right. So you're probably thinking to yourself now, what the hell do we do? We got ourselves tarred and feathered, but what's going to happen? Like, what can we do with this? Well, you know what? Let's go. You know, let's just go around the island and see what we can do. Let's go over to the swamp. Talk to Murray. Pollo Diablo. At last, one of my demonic brethren come to set me free. Oh, brother. Wait, what? Release me so that I might run free alongside you as we terrorize the mortals of this island. <laughs> I'm out of here. Wait! Don't leave! No! Wait, but wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Didn't he just call us El Pollo Diablo? The giant demon chicken that terrorizes the island? D did he seriously call us El Pollo Diablo? No, I want to. I want to try that again. Let's try. Let's talk one more time to good old Murray. El Pollo Diablo. You have returned for me! Yeah! Oops. Oops? What do you mean, oops? we can begin our reign of demonic terror! Wait! <laughs> I feel bad leaving Murray alone. Come on, Guybrush. Be a pal and pick him up. Come on, please. He thinks you're El Pollo Diablo. El Pollo Diablo! Yeah! You have returned for me! Again! Oops. At last, we can begin our reign of no, demonic terror! No, it's the same thing, third time. Wait! Right! Come back! No. Uh, so there's no one to talk to over at the fort, which is a bummer. If we go back to the beach, Palado here is asleep. He's asleep. Yeah, so he's asleep. So I think I might I should have done this before I got the map. Yeah, and before I scared off the Cabana boy. I really should have. Damn myself. Curse myself for not doing this earlier. Ah, oh well. Some things I'll never learn. The kid's gone, so I can't bother him. You know, let's go... Let's go say hi to, to the gang here over at the Barbary Coast. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> They're all doing the work. El Pollo Diablo, the demon chicken! We don't serve your kind here. Made it! Get me the scissors! Eviscerate him! Ah! Uh. Red ever second claws in this place. But I want the neck. <laughs> guys, I, I'm we're not El Pollo Diablo. I don't know what the hell's up. What, what you guys are talking about? We're not El Pollo Diablo. We're Guybrush. Let's try that again. <laughs> They're all still working. It's El Pollo Diablo. Eviscerate him! Yikes. Okay, okay. So going there is not gonna work. What if we go in the uh, the theater here? It's El Pollo Diablo. Kill him. 
Uh oh. Yikes. Okay, so a bad idea. Really? Uh -oh. Wow, so everyone here thinks we're El Pollo Diablo for whatever reason. I don't know why they think we're El Pollo Diablo. I mean, I guess I can hazard a guess. I mean, I mean, think of I mean, look at us. You'd say Guybrush is maybe about I don't know. Well, no, he's not. He can't be seven feet tall, but you know, he is. He is pretty gangly. He is tall, in of like himself. Like he is pretty tall looking. So I don't know. I mean, he's tall. He's covered in white feathers. Uh, you know, he very well could be El Pollo Diablo. Oh, uh, maybe. But we are not done here. We still have one more person to bother. So let's go over and talk to old Blondebeard, who apparently thinks blah, uh, blah, 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 I can't talk for some reason. Ugh, man, I must be kind. Of, I must be getting kind of tired. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Now, so well, we should go talk to Blondebeard and you know say, hey, look, we're El Pollo Diablo. Fear us, for we will kill you, because that's what you think we're gonna do to you. Let's try that. Do you have a reservation? Mm -hmm. Madre de Dios! Es el Pueyo Diablo! Si! Sí. Oh, I love that. I love that music. That That is so, that's so good. Um... Huh... Good ones. So either got... Que? You got, huh? We got this one, or we have it in Espanol. Let's go Espanol. Si, he dejado en libertad los prisioneros y ahora vengo por ti. Yeah. You're not taking me without a fight. Oh no? Frying pan, you cheap bastard. Ugh, this chicken grease washed off all the feathers. You don't say. Oops, I better keep quiet. Absolutely, Captain. I'll get right on it after I have my dinner. What's that, Captain? What? I eat too much fried chicken. Well, I... I've just got a weakness for chicken, that's all. I know you don't have any weaknesses, Captain LeChimp. You're an over... LeChimp? A doer. I'm just a tiny... His name's LeChimp? The Captain is an ape? Yeah. Well, the Captain is an ape. Then Mr. Fossey must be... Aye, aye, Captain! Fresh bananas for the whole crew! An utter loon. What's that, Captain? <laughs> Your parasites are bothering you. Well, of course I'll groom you, sir. You know, sir, finding this gold statue may be just the boost our crew needs. What, with the riches we get from this, we can get new and better ships and become the terror of the Caribbean! You're kidding me. You're... you're kidding me. His name... is LeChimp? And he's the captain? What the hell is going on here? What the hell? Honestly, what... the... hell? So much for... Th so much for thinking it was LeChuck. I mean, phew. Thinking it's LeChuck, but no, of course not. Now that we know that it's actual a freaking ape. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm just a little irritated. I'm a little pissed off. I'm really pissed off. Ugh. But you know, I think this is. I think now is a good time, as like this now is a good time as any to go and just you know end the episode off here. Yeah. So you know. Thank you guys so much for watching and finding out that the Lucha that Fossey was that Mr. Fossey was talking about was just a freaking ape. Ugh. I mean, I hope you guys enjoy that little twist there. So yeah. So I guess in the next episode we'll try and figure out what the hell we can do here. 
I mean, honestly, I have no idea what we can do with or what or what's gonna happen. Uh, so yeah. So until next time, guys. Uh, as always, I am Skullman012291, and I'm signing out. Peace, guys. Take it easy.